There are a couple of different styles of hats that you need to kind of consider. Uh, the first one is going to be a structured hat where there is on the inside of this hat a very uh, stiff woven backing. Um, that's a buckram. That's going to be in a structured hat. This one doesn't have that. It's floppy. It doesn't have anything really to hold it up. Um, so this is an unstructured. And the reason you want to consider which style of hat, um, it may impact how much or what kind of backing you use on those hats. Um, other things to consider, the profile of the hat. This one's a little bit higher profile. It's still a relatively low profile, but it's higher than, say, this unstructured that kind of comes right back over the hat or over the head very quickly. Um, this one at least comes up a little bit before it heads over. Um, the, the profile, how high this comes up, um, will impact how large of a design that you can sew on it. So all those things you'll need to consider um, when, when selecting your hat or when dealing with this is the style of hat that my customer chose, now I need to make sure that my design actually fits on that, or the other way around. This is the design that my customer needs, let's make sure they get a hat that will actually fit it. Um, all right, so when dealing with hats, to start off with, um, I need to prep them for hooping, and what I'll do is I will open them up, I will straighten out the bill as much as I can, doesn't have to be perfectly straight, but a little bit straighter um, does tend to help. And then I'm going to pull out the sweatband as much as I can. Now there are times that I will run across uh, caps that have the sweatband actually stitched in on the side with just a couple of little stitches there. Um, I've been known to trim those out um, just so that I can get the sweatband uh, a little bit farther out. The other thing, cardboard, just to support it, make sure that you're not sewing through that. All right. Once I have all of that out of there and my sweatband open, um, some people unstrap or, or unbuckle the strap in the back. Um, I tend to leave it. It's completely up to you. And now I'm going to take these clips off of my cap frame. They're just little kind of bent binder clips. Um, they attach to these posts. Now they are great for when you're sewing on the sides of a cap. You can secure the side of the hat to this post and kind of smooth that area out and give it a little bit more stability. Um, I also use it to hold my backing. So I'm going to set those aside and I'm going to slide this onto my gauge. Slide this into place. Now that I've slid that into place, I'm going to open this strap. Now let's look at backing. So if you're doing just the front, uh, you might get away with a smaller piece of backing, um, but it is a little bit harder to hold and get into place uh, while you're doing that. Uh, I, if I'm doing the sides of the cap and I also find that it helps hold a little bit better, um, we'll do a little bit more backing. And then if I'm only doing the front, I will save these sides, just the scraps, and I will use those when I'm doing um, little tiny embroidery like the corner of a collar or um, if I am doing the center and I need two pieces of backing, I will sandwich the shorter piece between the cap itself and the longer piece. Um, I like to actually have the backing be held with these clips, and as long as I have a way to get in and get those clips back out before I start sewing, that's great. If I don't, um, you need to find another way to hold it. Some people use um, like this green tape um, and tape it to the gauge. Um, I just clip onto these posts. You can rotate this cap gauge by pressing on this lever and rotating the gauge itself. This is not something I do very often when I am hooping, but it is something I do very often when I'm demonstrating. Notice on this gauge that there is a trough right here. This trough is where we want this fold of fabric to end up. So the, basically the inside of the bill needs to end up right in there and kind of resting in there. So when we hoop that, we want to make sure that that happens. This, these teeth are also what help it grab. So I want to make sure that my backing falls over those teeth. Some people will go all the way up. I find it a little easier if I come back just a touch. So I kind of rest against this ridge. And then I'm just going to clip into place. And I am just clipping with those binder clips onto those posts. Now if I rotate this around, you can see what I'm talking about. Okay. So now I want to bring my cap up over my backing. I'm holding the sweatband out. I'm going to go as far back as I can. 
until I hit that bill stop. I'm gonna pull this back so you can see. I don't want you to be hooping like this because you'll be shoving parts of the bill and the bill will get in the way and that's not gonna work well for you. We want that fabric to fall into that trough, so I'm gonna press down and make sure that's really in the trough. The other thing I want you to pay attention to, and I'm bending this forward again, um, not how I would hoop normally, but so that you can see inside and out that this red line almost lines up with the seam, but the seam is a little bit to the left. And that's because when we tighten the strap, it'll go a little bit to the right, it'll pull back over. Okay, so once I have that into that trough, I'm gonna smooth that out, my sweatband's out all the way. I'm gonna press this and rotate so that you guys can see what I'm doing. This makes it a lot harder to hoop than if I just move my body. Now I'm going to fold this sweatband. I'm going to come over, I'm gonna fold this sweatband kind of in half and I'm gonna bring this strap over. And what I'm looking to do is I wanna bring these teeth just to the top side of this stitching and then when the teeth switch back over to that side, I want them to fall right into that seam, or at least line up to do that. So I have to fold my, my sweatband in half a little bit so that I can get around this hinged piece. So I'm gonna fold in half. I'm going to have those teeth fall. There we go. And then I want them to fall right to the top side of this stitching. There we go. And then fall right into this seam. And as I rotate this back around, again, this makes it much harder to hoop, but it makes it much easier to show. I'm going to straighten this out, make sure that I'm in that trough. There we go, in that trough. Have those teeth fall into that seam. Let's bring this back over so you can see. There we go. And I'm going to fold my sweatband so that the teeth fall just to the top side of that stitching. So they're falling into the seam here, come around as they switch, they fall just to the top side of that stitching. And then I'm going to hook it, but I'm not gonna latch it yet. So then I'm gonna bring it back around. So, as I have it hooked and not latched, I'm gonna put my thumb over here and you can see that I've got a bit of a gap. When you're using traditional hoops, you adjust the hoop for the material. We need to do a similar thing with the cap. So I'm going to loosen these wing nuts. I'm gonna make sure that my cap is still in place and I'm gonna slide that extra back out of the way and then I'm gonna tighten these back down. Now this is something that you only need to do per style of cap. It's not gonna be something that I'm doing every time. So now I need to latch it. Some people find it's easier to pull on the back of the cap as they latch this. All right, now I'm gonna go inside this cap and remove these clips. So now I wanna make sure that I stabilize the sides. I'm gonna do that with these clips. So I will smooth the fabric out and I will clip them to that post and I'll make sure that I clip both the backing and the material. So I'm gonna rotate this around. Again, this is something that I'm doing for demonstration. It's not necessarily something I would do when I'm hooping. So I'll smooth out that material and then I will press down and go around that post and clip to that post with the handles pointed towards the back. You can do that to the other side as well. As you're smoothing this material out, I wanna make uh, sure that you're not just pulling really tight and then trying to clip to it. If you pull it really tight and then try to clip, as soon as you let go, the clip's gonna go flying across the room. Uh, so make sure that you press down around that post, give yourself the room, give yourself the material, just make sure it's relatively smooth, and then clip to it. And now I'm ready to remove my hat from the gauge, so I'm just going to pull straight off. So now I'm gonna slide this off and I'm going to look inside of it and I wanna make sure that the backing is caught all the way around. So that's what I'm looking for. Um, it's nice and smooth, there aren't any deep wrinkles. It's caught all the way around, it's caught in the teeth. The other thing that I'll do is make sure that the hat's really on there and it's not gonna fall off. Um, all right, so now that I have this hooped up, I'm ready to put it on my machine.